Hi everybody, I'm Chris from Race Car Camp, and in this episode, I'm going to show you what it takes to make 140 or 150 naturally aspirated horsepower out of your Mazda 1.8 liter motor. Normally I would go through the build and then show you the final product, but I wanted to start today's video off with the final product. It's taken a while to get here and there's a lot of custom work in here, nothing hard, and then there's a lot of bolt-on stuff in here, uh, most of it off-the-shelf Mazda components. As part of the 1.6 to 1.8 conversion, I do need to retain my 1.6 alternator assembly. Now you could swap to a 1.8 alternator with the ribbed belt, but this is what I had on hand and so this makes install the easiest. On my block, I've added this T-fitting and then I run my aftermarket oil pressure sender to my gauge. This lets me retain the factory gauge in the cluster as well as an aftermarket gauge to report the actual mechanical oil pressure. Next up, we have the very beefy motor mounts. These are designed for your 1.8 uh, VVT and up applications. This is a VVT donor block. On the back side of the head, you'll notice that there's a cast here. This is a 1.8 BP4W worked overhead it has a turbo cam it was a nice hand-me-down from a friend who got it after head gate and so i'm very excited to see the kind of power that it makes i no longer have a heater core in the race car so this is really just added weight and added fluid that i need to carry so instead i've machined this plug run a very similar o-ring i got the entire 1.5 mazda protege plastic covers for 35 dollars <laughs> and they fit perfect you will notice that I'm reusing the 1.8 upper cover because it has that hole for the water neck. And that's actually another interesting point. I've plugged my front water neck head with a 30 millimeter plug, but because I have that coolant reroute on the back of the head, all that water comes up front into the radiator. Normally the front water neck holds your water temp sensor, which triggers your fan kick on. But again, I'm on a mega squirt, so that part is unnecessary. The next thing that I'm pretty fond of is the square top intake manifold. It runs a regular BP4W throttle body and throttle position sensor. We also have RX-8 yellow injectors. That's going to be more than enough to deliver my E85 fuel. And you can just make out this blue gasket on the intake manifold. This is one mod that I'm uh, a little sketchy about, but lots of people love it when it works. It is a Honda spacer. And what it does is it's supposed to cool the intake air by spacing it just that little bit off the hot head. And then I've blocked off my EGR stuff. You also notice that there's no idle air control valve. This is just a simple diamond plate block off. That's the last bit here is the Rev9 coil pack conversion uh, and we'll run it probably sequential uh, spark fire out of the mega squirt. We're looking at a high compression piston arrangement on the inside with forged rods so I can run a little bit higher RPM, a boundary oil pump to support a little higher oil pressure at that higher RPM, and then ACL race bearings. But all of this is totally doable in your garage. And again, that's the point of all these videos is to show you that you can make quality motors in your garage if you just follow instructions. You can stop now if you want, but I hope you watch the rest. We'll go through the build. I'll show you it's not hard. A couple of tips and tricks along the way in the build, a couple of tips and tricks for machining some of these homemade parts at home. You can get this done and make 140, 150 horsepower. As I begin tearing down the block, I want to give a big thank you to Midwest Miata Parts, who supplied the donor VVT motor and all the seals and gaskets for this build. Check them out for anything you may need. They have a huge inventory down in Columbus, Ohio. Also, a big thank you to JB, who contributed to purchasing the engine building tools used in this video and our previous OEM rebuild. And finally, I gotta give a shout out to Flying Miata. We buy a bunch of stuff from them, but when I reached out about their V2 tool set, they happily sent us one on the house to review. And as you'll see later in the video, I'm blown away by it. It's amazing.
excited to show everybody how the new Flying Miata V2 crank tools work. Um, if you watched my previous videos, you would have seen me using a machined aluminum piece for some of these oil seals around the engine block. Um, they've now got a V2. Uh, it's light. It looks maybe 3D printed out of something much more durable than standard PLA, and it still has that same machined lip. And all that we need to put this seal on is the seal, the crank bolt, the tool, and of course just a ratchet to run it on. So I'm going to oil the seal, put it on, and then show you how the tool works. Put oil on the seal. I cannot stress how important that is. For some reason, a lot of people seem to ignore it on the forum. So I'm just going to slide on the crank. But this tool has a very clever bevel on the inside. So we're going to put it on the crank. It's a very tight fit, no slot. And then just use the crank bolt and tighten it in until it stops. It's genius, it takes all the guesswork out of, did I put it on too little or too much? Do I have to pull it off? And it of course seals it evenly as well. So I'm using a ratchet just for ease of assembly, but you can see I'm all the way choked up on the ratchet. It doesn't need a bunch of torque. It's just pressing in where it stops right there. We're done. And that's how freaking easy these tools make it. I love genius little tools like this and I could not be happier. All right, as I finish up all the head work, I'm going to show off the Fine Miata cam tool. Very similar to the crank tool. It has nice machined lip in here. Well, this one is, you know, very nicely 3D printed. But um, on these V2s, they still have the same lip. So it's going to go on. And it's only going to go on so far. And that's when we're done installing. So just like the other seals, oil the ledge here. And then I also oil the seal and you just press it on and then use the tool to follow it and that is as easy as it gets. There's no torque to worry about here. You just go until the seal pressing mechanism stops. That's it. I cannot believe how easy that tool makes this job. So as you can see, it sits perfectly flush. And it's just brilliant. So we have to find a solution for my water pump block off. Um, here's the water pump. Here's the water pump. Here's the neck. It goes on the water pump. I don't have a heater core anymore. So this pipe, which comes back from the heater core, has to go into the fill, into the return neck, like that. Oop. Now a lot of people say they can weld it, but I don't like the idea of welding aluminum. And we have this huge cavity with which to set something in. So we're going to attempt to machine something that matches this out of aluminum, put a washer on it and pin it in place. That should prevent any pressure blowout and be a lot safer. So now I got an hour and a half drive up to Nowheresville, Ohio, come back, but hopefully we'll be putting it all together. We've made it to the hangar. We're at 7.15. Yeah, beautiful. Thanks, Leonard. Yeah, that's perfect. 
Uh, I should probably give that a wipe down. I mean, it spritz on that too. Thank you. Like, wow, so much for that indexing mark. You can get a little pin in right there, you know. Right there, perfect. So, come over, we'll do it. We'll bend it up with some pliers. Alright man, think it's gonna work? Yeah, I think that's yeah, okay. Great. You know, if you're worried about it, the only other thing you could do is silicone it up and slap it in there, you know. But yeah, if it leaks like the nice thing about this, if it leaks, you can, you can take it out and put another one in here. Quick run through of what's going to be the charging system on the car. So this is the 1.8 bracket that holds the the 1.6 alternator, 1.6 harmonic balancer, water pump pulley, and alternator pulley. The other option I could have gone with was a 1.8 alternator from the early cars, but I don't have one of those, so we just reuse the 1.6 alternator. All right, so here I have my 1.8 fuel rail, and what I'm gonna do is I've cut the nipple off because I just wanna run regular fuel line for ease of track side maintenance. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use my flare tool and I'm gonna add a flare onto the existing line, which will then let me uh, affix the hose to it and get a little bit of nipple on there so that it won't you know, overpressurize and come off. There we go, nice little bell shape so that the hose can slide on and I got something to put a hose clamp on. The Fly Miata kit also comes with this clever crank holding tool. It allows you to butt up against the water pump and then tighten the crank bolt to the proper torque without moving your rotating assembly. This is our coolant reroute plate. The way it goes is it's a sandwich plate that goes on the back of the head and then the water neck sends the water back up to the radiator. However, a coolant reroute kit generally has this orifice open with a nipple on it that goes back into the heater core and then the heater core eventually goes back to the front of the motor. We don't have a heater core, so I'm gonna have to plug this up with an MPT fitting and I'll put this on here and this on here and then route everything back to the front of the motor, leaving room for the oil cooler line to come in here. The RX-8 injectors are finally here. So these should flow 420 to 450 cc according to the internet. So I just put a little bit of oil on all the O-rings. So when I put the rail on, it'll go on nice and smooth. Here's our final sort of reroute to the fuel pressure regulator. So play down the end of the rail, go up to my fuel pressure regulator because on the 1.6 it's a return fuel system. So you gotta have provisions for that. It just wiggles right into place. That is the long block assembled. I'll go through and I'll check everything that I haven't marked. Like you can see, I got to tighten down the square top stuff, but that's the end of the road. We'll fish in the wiring harness after we install everything. So from here on out, it's pull that out, put this in, plug in the wiring, and in theory, it should start.